Hey everybody, back at it. As you can see in the background, uh, you're gonna see me coming out here a lot of times and I'm sometimes I'm dressed nicely in a nice slacks and shirt and other times I'm dressed in my workout clothing. I'm trying to figure out a time when I can come out here like so that I'm always out here every day and I've kind of figured out that I go to the gym every day uh, and I figure if I come out here for like at least an hour before I go to the gym, hey, I'll get more work done, right? Take another bite out of this freaking plane. <laughs> Um, so sometimes you might see me in kind of not the nicest clothing. But anyways, going to continue working on it. Got a lot of work to do. So in the last little bit, you probably saw me staring at the plans, trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do. And that's because of these holes along the top part of this particular rib and that one over here. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to dimple all of these holes or not. Now the plans say that I'm supposed to dimple all the holes that correspond with a nut plate. So for example, there's a nut plate in this rib and there's a nut plate in this rib. So obviously I'm supposed to dimple that one and that one. But what about these? I don't actually know. I skipped ahead in the plans a little bit trying to see how they are attached. Um, and I, I couldn't immediately see it. It gets a little complicated. There are a lot of parts in this particular area. so. I figure what I'll do is I'll not dimple them for now and come back and dimple them later. There's infinite access here so I can get a squeezer in here and dimple these if I need to. Uh, down the road that may change so I may just be kicking this can down the road but hopefully I'll have a better idea of how this works in the future. I'm willing to bet these are supposed to be dimpled um, just because over on this side of the, you know, these ribs have nut plates and dimples. There's probably something that goes here that has, you know, nut plates, um, and thus they should be dimpled, but I don't want to assume. So that's where I'm at. That's what I was doing and, and what took me so long to sit here and research and try to figure out. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm kind of kicking a can down the road a little bit. Um, meh. So yeah. But this one, this one's dimpled. This was the one, the main one I was surprised about because I saw this and I was like, you know, it didn't tell me to dimple that one because it obviously had to be dimpled because the, this piece is dimpled. Uh, and then I saw where it says dimple those that are having nut plates. I wish that the plan specifically had arrows saying dimple this one, you know, don't dimple that one or whatever. Or even a lot of places it'll say something like, you know, uh, dimple this one times seven or however many holes there are so you can kind of figure it out. But th in this case, it, it, it just said dimple the ones that have... Uh, attach holes well or dimple the ones that marry up to uh, a nut plate well at that point when you're working on this part neither one of them this this nut plate it, it, it didn't meet up with it yet so you kind of had to go back and figure it out so anyways kick in the can uh, I may need to do six more dimples along the tops of each of these uh, we'll see So right here, you're gonna see me, I'm putting the bottom skin on uh, the part that I'm working on because in the plans, it actually says that I might wanna do that. Um, it, it basically is talking about how you're gonna to wanna to, to use the fluting tool across one of the bottom of the ribs uh, and you wanna make sure uh, you flute so that the holes line up. Holes already line up. Um, I've said it before, I'll say it again, that's one of the things that Vance has gotten spot on, the ability to have two holes across completely disparate parts line up perfectly. There was no need to put the skin on, it all came out perfect. Um, but still I did it because the plan said to. So anyways, that's what I'm doing, uh, that's what I did there, uh, and now I'm on to other things. Hey guys, I'm out here in the hangar this morning just a little bit before I run over to the gym. I figure I might as well get a few minutes in while I can. And I noticed something while assembling the backs of uh, the back side of this. These are the, the, the ribs that go below the seats effectively. Um, one thing that I've noticed is we've got a little bit of oil canning. So now oil canning, uh, I think I've shown you this previously on other parts of the plane when I ran into it. It's not something you generally want, uh, but it's when a piece of aluminum will change directions like it's got enough of a, a bend it'll pop you know, in the other direction over time if that continues to happen it will eventually cause a failure of the part uh, we're talking a lot of time here but it, it can cause cracks and whatnot um, so I've reached out to vans to figure out how bad this is now I've noticed in like the wings uh, ribs and a couple other places where I had a very minor case of it that I was either able to crimp 
the edges enough that it kind of went away. Or when I click out everything to the skins and finally riveted it, it went away entirely. Those ribs were so stiff, it, it had nothing. Here, this is really drastic. That's a lot of oil canning. And so um, you'll note this piece out here, which does not have any of these gussets that they've kind of stamped in here, this doesn't have it. But these that, that have the gussets do have it because this piece has been stretched and smooshed and mangled a little bit such that it has a lot more strength. This is a much stronger rib than this one, for example. But how bad is this? Um, so like I said, I've reached out to Vans. I'm going to find out if this is something I need to worry about and need to remove, or if just clicking it all to the skin, top and bottom and all the various bits, if that's enough, we don't have to worry about it uh, anymore after that. We'll see what they say. I'll be interested to find out. Um, I'm willing to bet for the most part, since I know from other pieces, once you clico everything together, it's a non-issue, that I don't have to worry about it. But better safe than sorry. I'll keep you posted. Okay, guys, so uh, I reached out to Vans. I've put myself in the middle of the screen here because it's going to be easier to talk to these two ribs that are behind me, this one that I'm holding in my hand. Um, I've talked to Vans about uh, the oil canning on these particular ribs and what to do about it. Uh, so now what I'm talking about here is, if you look, this, this rib is kind of at a funky shape and it's a lot of it is due to the fact that they've kind of pressed in remember there's a big stamp machine that makes these parts pressed in these um divots here if you will inside the skin to give it a little bit of rigid uh, rigidity and stiffness the problem is is that causes oil canning right it kind of goes pop 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 right and that's that's not something you want now what they say is you're supposed to be able to place this on a flat surface like i've done behind me and it should lay flat um, you achieve this through copious amounts of uh, fluting along the edges and you know just general bending and massaging of the part uh, you don't want to get too egregiously aggressive as suddenly these holes won't line up anymore with the skins but that's how you solve it i've been out here for hours working on this um and over the course of a couple days and uh that is as flat as i can get that uh, you can see here on this side how that one end is really far up. Uh, that's what it looks like before, and the other side is what it looks like after. I can just push down that middle part right at that split, that seam, and it, it, it like sinks down and sits firmly on the table nicely. But unfortunately, it's just one of those situations where that's the best I can do. Hi, what's up? Just saying hello. Wait. Come on in. I thought you were with somebody. Nope, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> That happens a lot. People come out here all the time. They'll just be like, hey, who's going this hangar? And they'll just open the door and walk in. <laughs> anyway, nice folks. Aviation community is amazing. Um, so I did reach out to Vans, like I said, a number of times. And I asked specifically uh, if they had a good um, plan, like where on the part to specifically flute to get the correct results. Uh, they were not able to provide that, they, which makes sense. Um, you know, every one of those ribs is slightly different just due to the nature of the stamping process and, you know, maybe imperfections in the aluminum or whatnot. Like if you put all of them on the table, all of them have a slightly different bend to them, uh, the shape that they want to be in. So they can't provide you with an exact schematic of, you know, flute here and it will always be right, which I get it. It makes sense. But that's the best I could do. I'm going to do that through the rest of them. Um, I will say that when I push both, like I can actually push both ribs flat on the table and without, without fluting any of them. And they look like they're in good shape and just fine. So I think the majority of this problem uh, kind of disappears once you put all the Clecos in. So I may be overthinking this. So with that, I would say don't kill yourself on this one. Don't overthink this or worry too much about it. Do the best you can, get it as flat as you can, but ultimately if for whatever reason you're where I'm at where you can't get it any flatter than that, then you'll be fine. So for as little of a town as this is, again, I'm in Blairsville, Georgia. Um, I'll put a link to it up here, the airport, but for as little 
of a town and as out of the way and as remote as we are, sometimes we get some pretty cool planes taken off out of here. So something real quick, possibly a little amusing. Uh, I spent a good, I mean, a good 20 minutes trying to look through the plans and figure out if I missed a step. And the reason for that is, so this particular part, this is F1018R, uh, it's one of the rear outboard ribs. You have to, um, these 332nd holes on this web, you have to dimple because there's gonna be skin right here, but not on this one, and I thought, Surely, if there's skin here, then on this outboard rib, there's going to be skin here, and you have to do the same thing on these. And I was like, okay, I screwed up. I missed a step, and I'm going through, and I'm going through, and I'm thinking, and nowhere does it say in the plans that you have to that you have to dimple those. And I'm like, okay, either their plans are bad, I'm screwing something up. Uh, no, something more important goes here. Um, the wing. <laughs> so the, the wing is right here. Uh, this is the, the basically the, the wing ends, I'm going to guess, right about here and goes, you know, way over to here. So, yeah, the wing is right. That's the spar, right? The wing attaches here and here. So, yeah, you don't have to dimple those. There's going to be no skin there. That's where the wing goes. So trust the plans. I mean, it's okay to second guess a little, but don't make any, like, don't, don't, dimple those because surely that must be. No, no, no. Research and figure it out first before you take action. So I just thought that was kind of amusing that I spent a lot of time trying to figure out what I missed and I hadn't missed anything. So I will say this, this is probably the most complex part I've assembled so far. Um, which is a good thing. I mean, the, the, my buddy told me the fuselage was the thing that was the most complicated and that he enjoyed the most, or least rather. I think I'll enjoy it the most. There's a lot of put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off over and over again just to make sure things fit together. And there's a lot of if you do it in the wrong order, it ain't gonna work. <laughs> so this is by far the most complicated piece, uh, which is cool. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, the one thing I'm gonna have to figure out, or a problem I'm gonna have to solve is trying to figure out um, how I'm going to, like, I need to build like a buggy or a cart or something that this whole thing can sit on. You know, this, this piece is going to be, I mean, not, not far from where it is now, you know, back, uh, butting up to the, to the empennage, but I need to have something it can sit on that's reasonable. So I'm going to have to build probably a small table or something just to carry it or so I can move it around while I work on it going for a flight next door um, <clears throat> I need to do something and that's that's coming uh, so that's something else I wanted to build is a small trolley or buggy because I can't leave it on my table my table is my work area right so at some point I'm gonna have to do something over here uh, and yeah yeah more woodworking <laughs> uh, there's a lot of putting together and taking apart though uh, it's like I've dis disassembled a whole bunch of stuff now, or I need to disassemble basically everything because I think we're finally doing the riveting. Coleco, left and right rear, then rivet them. Yeah, so I'm finally up to the step where it's like, okay, now we're getting serious. So let me continue cleaning up parts. A lot of taking, you know, going back and forth and deburring of all these ribs. <coughs> Hey guys, so some of my viewers have brought up some safety concerns. Um, one of them was hearing protection. You guys thought I should maybe wear some hearing protection while I'm out here running these rivets. I know the few times you've heard it on camera, it seems like it's incredibly loud. It's not that bad. Uh, joke's on you, I'm actually already deaf. Um, I have horrible tinnitus in both ears from high blood pressure and uh, with years of high blood pressure. I, I am medicated, but it's one of those things that it, once you get it, you got it. And from military, listening to radios all day while I was in the army, gunshots, all the other stuff. I, I my ears always ring. Uh, it's never a quiet room for me. <laughs> um, 
The other thing is, is uh, some of you brought up maybe like an OSHA concern of getting like some mats or something so that I'm not ruining my back. I actually have a whole bunch of these cobalt soft squishy mats. Uh, the problem with these mats is they're slippery as hell. You put it down on this painted surface and for whatever reason, you know, you'll step on it, it'll pick up an air bubble and it will slip right out from under you. I've tried roughing it up. I've tried use, using like a, some, you know, kind of sticky material on the bottom of them and either it permanently affixes itself to the painted floor or it doesn't work at all. Uh, so I just use good shoes, honestly, something that's got a good rubber sole. Uh, I wish the matte solution would work, but I have actually gone flying. I mean, it was like something out of a really bad commercial where it was like, whoa, you know, crazy. So uh, screw the mats. I'm not going to use those anymore. I've busted my ass uh, enough times. The other one is a lot of people bring up I should wear like a tool belt or have a, a trolley or a cart or something where I can put all the various parts as I'm using them. Uh, that would save me the whole walking back and forth thing. I kind of like the walking back and forth. Now I have thought about putting a tool cart together that has all my rivet, like a, a, a rivet cart, because I mean, I keep my rivets on the back wall. Uh, I should probably have something where I can just tool them around because I am always going back to the back wall and it's just like, you know, rivets and nut plates and all the things. Uh, the problem is, is in order to have that tool cart where all your tools are on it, that cart would be one huge, heavy and unwieldy. I'd rather just leave them and go get them each time. I don't mind the walking. Um, is a little, it is a little extra back and forth, uh, but honestly, hey, maybe it'll make me fit. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for your concerns, guys. Hey guys, thank you a bunch. That's where I'm going to cut this one short. I'm still working on it. I still got a long way to go on the fuselage, but I'm really enjoying it. If you want to help support this channel, do me a favor, click that like button over there. Or if you would like to see more content, what you can do is you can join my patrons page and for as little as a dollar a month, you can actually see kind of more in-depth VR 360 style view videos that I'm putting out over there. Anyways, thank a bunch. I'll see you next time.